with my passion of cooking Mexican and giving it to another person and seeing the immediate reaction, for me, has changed my life. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Australia is an amazing place with people coming from all over the world to contribute and live their best lives. Many people come to Australia armed with credentials in various fields, but for some, the low barrier to entry in hospitality sees them cooking the food of their original homeland to earn a living. Others, however, through choice or fate, abandon their former careers and take us all on a journey through their heritage with food. Daniela Guevara Munoz is the co-owner of La Popular Taqueria in Port Adelaide, South Australia. Daniela, how are you? Hi, very good. And you? Very good. It's great to have you on the show. Um, you've had an interesting path to um, having a, a Mexican restaurant in South Australia. Um, t- tell us about what you're doing there. Ah, well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be with you. I never thought that I was going to be chatting with you, actually. (laughs) So this is amazing. Um, uh, Yeah, so I have a restaurant in Port Adelaide, a Mexican, um, traditional Mexican taqueria. So that's what I do. I do Mexican food. So I've been doing that for five years. So it's going to be five years that we opened the restaurant. And yeah, so I've been, uh, like before that, we used to do dinners uh, at home. So it's when I really started thinking about opening a restaurant and we finally did it. Well, I want to explore that sort of that moment of, of that change and shift, but you weren't always in the hospitality sector. You, um, you're a marine biologist by trade. Tell, tell us a little bit about um, what brought you to Australia and what you were doing? Yeah. So, yes, I'm a marine biologist and I studied that in Mexico City and then I moved to the Caribbean part of Mexico where I met my now husband, Gore, which he's from the Netherlands. Uh, so we met and then I was working as a marine biologist there. I was a director of a marine park. And then Gore got uh, my husband name, name is Core, uh, Core got an offer to come to Australia to work here as a marine biologist too. So I was like, yeah, my dream was to come to Australia as a marine biologist, you know. So I was working in in uh, in uh, coral reefs uh, conservation. So for me, coming to Australia was was one of my goals in life, you know. And then when we arrived to Australia is when I decided to change careers. But I, <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because it was like, really one of my dreams was coming to Australia to study marine biology, uh, especially in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, but then it was when, yeah, I decided to change careers because I have this passion for Mexican food. So, yeah. Tell us, bit, tell us a little bit about marine biology and your fascination, particularly with the Great Barrier Reef and um, sort of what you got out of those experiences? Well, uh, when I was working in Mexico, I was, I was the director of Marine Park. So I was dedicating myself to conservation of natural resources and also working with the community uh, to protect their resources, fisheries, the coral reefs, as a, like working with uh, tourism people. So for me, Australia was one of the examples of conservation. Um, especially Mexico, which is a little bit uh, difficult to do conservation because uh, people, uh, the communities, they have so many needs that it's difficult to get uh, the conservation into their minds because they need to survive in some ways, you know? So I wanted to always explore, I was always exploring how to to achieve these goals in, in my park. I call it my park because it was mine. <laughs> it wasn't mine, but it was like for, for all, all Mexicans. And, but yeah, so for me, Australia was one of the examples. So when I arrived to Australia, uh, I started working different things, but then I ended up working in the, in the, uh, Great Body of Reef Marine uh, uh, Authority, Gubrumpa. So, and I was like, wow, 
this is not what I want to do anymore. <laughs> 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 I mean, not in a bad, bad sense, but it was like, like, oh, okay, this is, yeah, this is, this one, this was one of my passions, but now I have the opportunity to do my other passion, you know, which is food. T take us back to when you were young. What, what sort of role did food play in your family? Can you tell us about sort of feasts and the sort of food that you enjoyed with your family as a kid? Yeah, um... My parents, they are foodies and they took us to my sister and I to different restaurants. So we explored, since we were very young, different types of food, like from different countries. But also, like, my mom is a very good cook. So she was cooking all this amazing Mexican food and also, like, well, we had uh, we used to travel a little town, so we always had like traditional Mexican food available for us. So it was of course, and I remember the happiest moments of my with my family is having food, eating something. And in Mexican traditions, it's like you have uh, lunch and then you extend it till till dinner. So everyone stays. Yeah, everyone stays in on like. Um, uh, in the on the table, you know, like having dinner, like lunch, then dessert, and then some breads, and then end up having dinner all together again. So it's like a big, big party, you know. For for better or worse, um, many people sort of think of Mexican cuisine in a sort of a Tex-Mex or an Ozmex sort of way. Tell us about some of the dishes and and food from the region that you're from that you you ate a lot as a kid. <laughs> Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mexican, I'm from Mexico City. So Mexico City is full of like amazing tacos everywhere, you know, and different things that you can do with uh, the, the tortilla dough, you know, like it's not just tortillas, you can do thicker tortillas. Uh, tortillas and stuff them with meats or veggies uh we also have them for breakfast you know with a big like long tortilla with so sauce on top with e fried eggs you know um huevos rancheros which are eggs with salsa on top with a tortilla underneath you know like it's like you can have lots of amazing Mexi Mexican food, of course, in Mexico, but it's like you have to also look for the nice, like, like the good places to eat, eat. Like street food is one of the basics too. So you can go out and for a walk. And where I, my parents live, where I used to live, uh, there's a big street that is full of these little places, you know? So on weekends, my dad always... Uh, until now, it's like, what would you like to have for breakfast? And then he will go and buy something and bring it to home. And then we all have the breakfast together. So it's it's uh, it's like you can have it. It's very, very easy to go and buy things and bring them home and or go out and have them, you know, on the streets. You came to Australia to go to the Great Barrier Reef. How did you end up in Adelaide? Well, again, my husband, <laughs> his boss uh, moved to, to Adelaide and he was like, okay, would you like to go to Adelaide? And I didn't have a clue, you know, like I didn't know Adelaide. And I was like, well, it's, it sounds more like a city because I, we were living in, in Townsville, you know. And so when we moved to Adelaide, I was like, yeah, this is a good decision because this is a bigger city where I really can – can do my Mexican food. But I was like wondering how I was going to do it because we didn't have the money to to have a restaurant. And I didn't know if I really wanted to have a restaurant, you know? So we moved to Adelaide and then is when I started looking into how to make this happen. You know, like it was difficult because I needed to change really my career. It, it wasn't a dream anymore. I had I had to do it because I wanted to do it. And then I started researching how people do that. Okay, how can I do that? You know, like, and then I found this, this online, of course, reading and these underground dinings or uh, guerrilla um, 
dinners, you know, and and actually I think they started in Latin America. So yeah, so I was reading about that and I was like, okay, I can host dinners at home and cook Mexican and see how it goes, you know, because well, one of the things is like uh, it's very difficult to find traditional food, traditional Mexican food in Australia. So I needed to showcase that food to maybe some people that they never had it before. So it's it's a big risk, you know. Maybe they were not going to like it, even though for me it's tasty, you know. So <laughs> yeah, well, it's like like some things that I really like maybe some other people they don't like it you know so I was I was reading about that and I was like of course I was scared like how am I going to do this how how am I going to start it and and I did it so I did it the first dinner that I did it was just with close friends and then after that those friends told other friends and that's how we started doing dinners at home. So, yeah, so it was like maybe up to 16 people came. Yeah, uh huh. So, I, and I, I didn't charge, so because it was illegal, isn't it? Like, <laughs> so <laughs> I just suggested a price, you know, like, like, uh, yeah. And then if they were happy with the dinner, they could pay that or more, or they, not pay because I had a like a little pot where they put the money and I never realized like who was going to pay who paid or who didn't pay of course I at the end I counted the the money but but (laughs) but I needed I didn't know which person didn't pay you know like and that never happened (laughs) so that meant that I was I was doing something right probably (laughs) Do do you have any stories or favorite moments when you were sort of starting with these sort of guerrilla um dinner parties and experiences of sort of trials and errors and oh yeah sometimes things didn't work <laughs> you know like it was like in my tiny kitchen uh oh, there are very good moments where like people really enjoyed the food but not just the food the experience because that for me is the important thing like the experience of all of everything uh people were like very happy at the in, at the end saying that they really recognize that never had traditional mexican food before you know and that for me was like wow this this is it you know like this is what i want to hear like people really enjoying traditional mexican food in australia and yeah that's exciting but it was it was it was um some dinners were like very, very interesting. And they, like, they were coming. The, the, the people that came to the dinner, they didn't know each other. And they had to share the same table with people that they didn't know, you know, in a house of a person that they didn't know. And that's, that's so at the beginning, everything was like a like little bit us, you know, because no one was talking to each other, you know, like, but we, we always had it like a setup where I, I was cooking and I was making tortillas. So we always, uh, show them how we make the tortilla so they can uh, give it a go. So that, that opened another world too, you know, like, ah, I'm actually hands on in, in my dinner. You know, like, like, like these tortillas um, are amazing, you know, like, ah, that's how you make tortillas. Yes, this is how we make tortillas, you know, and try it, blah, blah, blah. It's not, doesn't taste like cardboard, like the ones that you can buy in the supermarket, you know, like, and people were like, just amazed because um, one of the things that I, uh, my, my husband and I did in Mexico when we were living there in the Caribbean, it was like hosting parties. And that's how I made the decision to change my career because we were always hosting parties at home and I was the one cooking mainly. And lots of friends came to the parties, of course. And one of my girlfriends told me like, uh, you should charge us for this. 
And I was like, no, I'm not going to charge anyone. Like, it's, this is my pleasure, you know, like, like, like cooking. And no, 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 but you should charge us for, for this. And I was like, no, no. So I left it there. And then when I arrived to Australia, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I can do that. And that's, then it's when the, my brain started like, oh, yeah, maybe I can do this. And yeah, so that's how I end up doing these dinners. Tell us about uh, the shift to finding a restaurant site and, and entering the world of hospitality from, from these dinners that you were doing? Mm, well, uh, so I was doing the dinners every, like we did dinners like maybe for four years, five years. Uh, I, did the, I did them like once a month. I, I wasn't doing them very often um, because uh, it, it took time, you know, like to prepare all this food uh, for the dinners. Uh, but then I was also looking spaces, dreaming about having a restaurant. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have a restaurant still. Like I'm not experienced with restaurant, uh, like as a, uh, having a restaurant. I, I was working in restaurants, washing dishes, you know, like, um, but I, I didn't have any experience. Um, so I was looking and then I found this NGO, Renew Adelaide, which is an NGO in Adelaide that uh, gives uh, space to people that want to set up a business or to start a new business uh, with rent free for, for a few months. And I was like, okay, we can try that. And then we started looking places. Uh, and this NGO recommended this one in Port Adelaide, and it was a horrible building, like, like really. And the space was horrible. It was a computer uh, workshop. I don't know. It had, like, lot, lots of uh, uh, partitions, and I was like, no, this one, I don't like this place. And my husband was like, yeah, we can do something. And I was like, you sure? Yeah, 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 we can do something. And I was like, okay. And then... That was it. Like we started planning and then, yeah, like we did everything. We, my husband put all the tiles in the restaurant. We did lots of things. Uh, like now, if you come to the restaurant, it's completely different. It's so bright and colorful and, and it's very tiny, but it's, it's good. Tell us a bit about what the offering is there. Is there a, is there a dish or two or a specialty you can sort of tell us about that um, speaks of what you're cooking there? Yeah. Uh, well, we make uh, mainly tacos and we do everything from scratch. Um, the, the, the taco that I really enjoy the most is the pork one, which is called cochinita pibil, which is a dish that is traditionally made in the southeastern part of Mexico where we used to live in the Caribbean. So... This dish is made with pork and usually traditionally it's made in a pit, like in a hole in the ground. And then you have to wrap it with banana leaves and cook it overnight. Uh, but we don't do it like that in the restaurant, of course. Uh, we put it in the oven overnight for 14 hours, 16 hours. And it's so soft and it's marinated. The, the meat is marinated with uh, anato seeds. Uh, which is a red seed that grows in the tropics. And it's, it's easy to recognize maybe because people in the Amazon, they use it to, color, to paint their faces, you know, like the lines that you can see of those people. Like it's very earthy and it's uh, so flavorsome because we mix it with spices and orange juice uh, and then marinate the, the meat. And then we cook it overnight, of course, as I mentioned. And uh, we serve it on, a, of course, a tortilla and pickled onion and habanero sauce. So that's, uh, it's very spicy. And it's a very traditional dish that is uh, usually eaten for breakfast. So it's, it's because it's very rich. So you need the whole day to, to digest it. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like my kind of breakfast. And yeah, no, mine too. <laughs> so that's one of my favorites. And uh, we have tacos and we also like make, now we are making our tortillas from scratch, from the corn. So that's something that I'm also very proud of. And 
And it's interesting to see the difference between the tortillas that we used to make with flour, with maize flour, and now from scratch. Well, tell us a little bit about that. What makes a great tortilla? Tell us about the process that you, you have. Well, the process is not that easy. <laughs> and you have, yeah, it, it has been a process that I've been working on like maybe for a year, two years now. And finally, now I think we made it. <laughs> uh, so it's the dry corn, um, but not the sweet one. It's a... Uh, we buy ours in a other shop. <laughs> um, so we cook the corn with uh, lime, pickling lime, uh, calcium hydroxide. And then we cook it, not the whole way through, but because we leave it overnight to soak in this mix of lime and the corn. And then next day we process it in a in a stone mill that we just bought. So we bought it from Mexico. So we put it in the mill and then the, it becomes the dough. And then is, with that is how we uh, make the tortillas. With that dough is what, what we use to make the tortillas. But the, the thing is, like, it sounds very easy, but it's, it also depends on the amount of lime that you have to cook your corn with, you know, and also depends on the type of corn that you have. So if we change the corn, we have to find the right amount of lime that we have to use for that corn, you know. So it's like the variables are very small, but it like... But you need to find the right point to, to, to get a very good, uh, uh, good product because otherwise you cannot make the tortillas. If you cook it too much, it will break. And if you don't cook it that much, you can, it won't be that elastic, you know? So things like that. You mentioned a little earlier how there isn't really um, a lot of traditional Mexican food in Australia. What, what's the response been like to, to what you're doing there? Do you have any stories of the, of, um, the response you've had? Yeah, well, several people come to the restaurant and saying like, ah, I really don't like Mexican food, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, well... Thank you for coming but <laughs> <laughs> and give us a go. Uh, you will see. You, you, you just have to try the food. And maybe it's because you haven't had Mexican food, proper Mexican food. You know, like you have had maybe, you know, like uh, the big chains and franchises. And that's not traditional. You know, and it's, it's, it's completely different. And then when, when people have, like, you can see it, like, like we have an open kitchen and you can see it as soon as I, they give a bite to a taco, you can see their eyes, like really, like, like it brightens their face, you know, like, it's like, wow. Okay. They are converted. <laughs> into Mexican. And yeah, so they say like, oh, wow, this is really amazing. And it's, yeah, well, if you do everything from scratch with very nice produce and, and with the techniques that it should be done, you know, like it will, it, yeah, that's why it's all this is coming to like, like you really enjoying. What surprised you about um, owning and running your own restaurant? I'm still surprised. Like, um, <laughs> I, I cannot believe it really. Like, I, I, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard work. Like really. Uh, but I really love to seeing people eating my food, you know, like really like seeing those expressions on people or people coming to the, to the kitchen to let us know like this was amazing you know like people really Mexicans that crying saying like ah this is this is this is it you know like this is I've been trying to all the restaurants but no this is it or I I didn't want to go to uh to other to try Mexican food because you you know it never tastes the same but then someone told me of this place and I came and I'm really happy that you exist. And it's like, like crying. And I'm like, always oh, like, don't cry because I will start crying. You know, like it's, it's, it's so emotional, like really. And people saying to you also like, thank you. Thank you for having us. 
at the restaurant. You, you usually doesn't do. You don't say that. You know, it's, it's like that means for me that I made them feel like they were at my place, at my, at my home. You know, and that for me is amazing. And yeah, this this it's 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 very nice, but also it has been challenging. You know. Um, people are expecting Mexican food to be cheap and that's not the case because Mexican food as so many other uh, foods from other countries are labor intensive you know and yeah so it's it's sometimes it's like ah oh, yeah but mm, you know it's good but it's too expensive it's not that expensive, I think, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I've never said that, and I'm now, and now I'm saying it, isn't it? <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's, it, in that sense, has been challenging because people are not used to, to uh, eat, like, proper traditional Mexican food where they have, like, if you want to have that, you will have to pay the price, you know? You've had an incredible uh, career change. Has this foray into food changed you? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. El, mm, like when I was working as a marine biologist in the conservation of natural resources, um, I couldn't see the results immediately, you know, like, like, my my efforts were going it was just the beginning of something that it was going to happen maybe in 10 years or more and cooking for me it has changed me because i can with with my passion of cooking mexican and giving it to another person and seeing the immediate reaction for me it has changed my life so, yeah, no, that's something very, very nice that you can see the result in. It's, it's, it's not comparable, you know, but it's like, but for me, seeing the result on, on, on people's faces, you know, it's, it's just so nice. And that's, I think that's what keeps me going because sometimes it's, it's, it's hard, hard work, you know, like oh, uh, having... Uh, being in a restaurant owner and the chef of the same restaurant. It's a very small restaurant. So my husband and I are, are the ones that are running the whole show with our wonderful staff. We've been very lucky with that too. Like we have an amazing staff. So, and they are so passionate about our, our food too. So that's, that's something that, that it's very, has been very good. But yeah, it, it changed my life. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> For people that haven't experienced true Mexican food, what would you say to them? Just come to try it. <laughs> come to try it and see how we make tortillas because you can see that also there. Uh, we make the tortillas there. Um, yeah, so come to try it and give it a go. Like Also, like if you are not in Adelaide, well, first you have to come to Adelaide. Uh, and then... You well go to the traditional uh, restaurants, Mexican restaurants in your area. I, th I think there are several around. Like there's in Sydney and in Queensland. I think also in Western Australia. And I've been seeing like they also do their tortillas from from, from scratch. So that's changing. Like when we started doing the dinners, there, it was a little bit difficult still to get some ingredients. Um, now it's getting easier. Now you can buy, uh, I think, uh, corn from Mexico to 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 bring to get it in Australia. Uh, so more people are doing more more uh, things with Mexican food, and I think that's that's great. Well, it's an absolute honour to have you on Deep in the Weeds, and congratulations on what you've built there. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, please keep in touch, Daniela, and we'll catch up again soon. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for having me. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep, 
stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the lives of the incredible people who ply their trade in the food and hospitality sector. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.